He who holds a spoon in the kitchen rules the world. All right, so for about 15 years now, I've been making this uh, pumpkin cheesecake, and I've never given up the recipe. Um, I started with a base recipe I found online years ago or in a magazine or something like that, and then over the years I've modified it, and it's drastically different, and people ask me for this recipe all the time, and... I just, I don't give this one up, but, uh, after I got cancer, <laughs> I started giving away my secrets. So this is what you're going to need. Basically, you are going to need three, eight ounce, uh, servings of cream cheese. You're going to need 29 ounces of pumpkin puree. You're going to need one and a half cups of sugar. You're going to need... And this is kind of like one of the secret parts. You're going to need a quarter cup of vanilla Greek yogurt. You're going to need four eggs. You're going to need cinnamon, vanilla, cloves, nutmeg. You're also going to need two pie crusts. I often make those from scratch, but generally around the holidays, I just buy the pre-made ones. It's much easier. You're also going to want to set your oven to preheat your oven to 350 degrees i'll go ahead and start that now make sure there's nothing in there and uh you want your eggs and your cream cheese to be at room temperature but the way that you start with this again you want your cream cheese and your eggs to be at room temperature i use the whisk brush in my mixer just because it seems to do better with the cream cheese. Once you got this in your bowl, you just want to take and turn your mixer on low. Scrape any that's on the sides. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and add the one and a half cups of sugar. Puree. I'm going to turn this mixer up a little bit. I'm going to start adding the eggs. Next, I'm going to add a quarter cup of the Greek yogurt. You see here, it's a quarter, quarter cup measuring cup. Pretty close to full. By the way, this is vanilla flavored Greek yogurt. You can use just plain also. Usually at this point is a good time to go ahead and stop this mixer. Raise it up. Scrape the sides down. The 
edges a lot of times will get cream cheese that sticks to it. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get this going again. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add about a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I usually go more with a heaping teaspoon. This is a half teaspoon measuring spoon, but you can see I go with like a heaping. Then you're going to do one eighth teaspoon of cloves. I do that the same way. It's more like a heaping. See? And also the same with the nutmeg. Same spoon, about the same amount. I do it just heaping. I'm going to go ahead and turn this blender up a little bit. The next thing I want to do, I want to make sure that all of the cream cheese is off the bottom. That is kind of like the biggest issue you are going to have with this. So basically what I'm doing is scraping the side to make sure I don't see any cream cheese stuck to it. Whoops. Trying to do it without hitting the camera. This looks pretty good. I can't really check the very bottom unless I turn this pretty. Now see there I actually saw some white in the bottom. I think it's going to be okay though. It doesn't, doesn't seem like it's too bad. All right. Once you have that done, the next thing you're going to do is get your pans, pie pans ready. Just fold up. If you're using the store-bought ones, just fold this up to take the plastic out. By the way, this is enough to make two pies. I usually always try to look to make sure that the pies aren't cracked, but I didn't this time. And I was like, oh, I bet the pies are going to be cracked. But they seem like they're all right. So once you get that done, then you're just going to pour your mixture in here. You want to do about half. You got to watch it because it'll try to take and the center will try to build up while the sides look like it's not very full, but it actually is. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. Make sure you save your tops, the plastic part you're taking out of these. That looks pretty good. So there is probably enough for like a half of a pie left. I'll tell you another thing you can do. You can actually take this and pour it into like cupcake molds and still use it. Or you can scrape it out into a Ziploc bag and freeze it. And then you've got it in the future. All right. So next thing we're going to do is put these in the oven. 350 degrees for one hour. All right. So the oven just started going off, and uh, that means this is done. 
Yeah, boy. So, the next thing that you want to do, um, if you've got cooling racks for like pies and cakes, you want to put them on a cooling rack and let them cool down a little bit. Once they are cool enough to put the plastic lids on it, then you've got to stick it in the refrigerator for four hours. Four hours is the minimum amount of time for a cheesecake for it to set up. Um, I usually, I'm making this, it's the day before Thanksgiving, so I, I do them overnight, but four hours is the minimum time. This is what we look like. Nom, nom, nom. And I'll show you this one because this happens often. Sometimes they will crack like that. That's just normal. That's just part of it. You can actually see that the other one, just since I took it out, also cracked. And it wasn't cracked when I first pulled it out. So that happens when it starts to cool down. They, they will actually cool down fairly quickly i usually leave them out about an hour or two um when they are you know when you can touch them and not burn your fingers you can put the plastic lid on them and then stick them in the refrigerator so anyways that's the last two steps oh one other thing i always make my cool whip from scratch and i was going to do a video on it but i'm actually taking these somewhere else and this Cool Whip, once you make it, pretty much has to be refrigerated. And I've got a long drive tomorrow, so I'm not go I actually am going to make the Cool Whip there. But let me tell you how to make this Cool Whip. You take one cup of heavy cream and you put it in a bowl. And then you take a wire whisk. Now you want your heavy cream to also be at room temperature when you start. It'll go much quicker that way. So take your heavy cream, one cup, let it be at room temperature, stick it in a bowl, take a wire whisk, and whisk it. Keep whisking it, keep whisking it, keep whisking it. After three or four minutes, your heavy cream will start to set up in what they call soft peaks. When you get to a soft peak stage, put four tablespoons of sugar in it and keep whisking it. After another couple minutes goes by, you'll reach what is called a hard peak for your whipped cream. When it gets to that point, add one or two tablespoons of vanilla extract to it, mix it up, and then refrigerate it immediately. That's how you make homemade Cool Whip, and it is way better than anything you'll ever buy in a store. So that's also the recipe that always gets combined with my pumpkin cheesecakes. Again, this is the first time I've ever given this recipe out. I've been making these for probably 15 years. I make them every year at Thanksgiving. Everybody always asks for the recipe. I never would give it up. That's the whole reason why I did this video. Post-cancer, I said I was going to give up all my secrets. And here I am, giving up all my secrets. Hope you enjoy. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.